coming along? The food's cooking nicely? Yes, yes, very nice. It Ooh. smells nice. Oh, magnifico. How many uh, people? And we'll, be, uh, and we'll taste the... How many people will you food? Will you serve today with food? Uh, How many? Uh, I hope 70. 70 here? Yes, yes, 70. Celestino Rivo is Portugal's solar crusader. Right now, this professor of engineering is sacrificing his weekend to cook lunch for a pack of hungry scouts. And the rice is red. Uh -huh. A bread? Here? Bread. A bread. Here, you have sardines. Portuguese sardines. Very nice. Here, the same uh, apparatus yeah. with, uh, with uh, a cake. A cake. A cake? A cake. The coffee is yeah. ready. Here, we have chicken. More chicken. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Apples. Mm. Boiling. Rapidamente. But what's special about the menu is not the food, it's how it's cooked. Very beautiful piece, this one. It came from Mexico. This is another kind of um, solar cooker. This is a box solar cooker. A box. This is paper, recycled paper. Solar cooker with cardboard and a plastic foil. The professor come chef shows me how to make a quick oven. It's good uh, virals of, uh, of solar cooking. Um, I'm a fanatic. Simple, certainly. But solar is renewable, and in Portugal these days, that's what it's all about. Os coteiros, os coteiros são amigos da natureza. Portanto, logicamente, aproveita o sol, está bem? Então, os rubitos, vá, vá, apresentem lá os rubitos, rápido. Apresentar o pano branco, firme, sentido. Apresentar a saudação. There are three very good reasons why Portugal is leading the world in adopting renewable energy. It has no coal, no gas and no oil. Did Portugal have to do this? Was there any other way? Uh, no, we don't. Look, uh, we can do it. We can imp keep importing coal and even from South Africa, from Australia, or import gas. But we'll be always depending from these sources and depending on the price. And since, let's put it this way, is God has given to the, to the Arabs the oil. And they have given to Portuguese the wind, yes. the sun, and the waves. I, I, for instance, like for Australia, 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 I think you have this, I have been there, you have the sun, you have the waves. Concerning the water, the rain, you know, it's not that much. But anyway, you have areas where it's quite rainy and can be used. But I don't know the Australia. But sun and wave they have for sure. And uh, why not use them? Professor Manuel Colares Pereira runs a solar panel manufacturing company. So what do we got here? So this solar collector. Take it to the tank. Take the water. Companies like his are taking advantage of European concerns about climate change. Climatic uh, changes are today perceived in Europe as a very, very serious threat. Uh, climatic changes due to the burning of fossil fuels. So the, the, the European Commission, uh, the European Union, uh, is much more committed now than it was in the past to renewable energies and to uh, energy efficiency. So that is inf influencing the policies. And of course, it influences the policies in Portugal too. <laughs> But Portugal is going much further than the EU target of 20% of renewables by 2020. Here at Serpa in the dry inland is the second biggest solar array in the world. 
Engineer Jamie Tokas is proudly showing it off to a group of businessmen. They are all interested in using alternative energies in their companies. Cada painelzinho destes de potência de pico que pode produzir 200 watts. E estão aqui 52.300. Para... Exatamente. Cada painel deste pequenito aqui, não é? Deste pequenino, deste pequenino. Cada pequenito, cada quadrado está cada Exatamente, cada rato tem cada rato tem 200 watts. Cerca de 200 watts. E esta é uma coisa pronto, que me interessa porque eu estou na parte tecnológica, estou na parte da manutenção elétrica e eletrónica. Pronto, e aproveitamos a nossa folga, nós uma vez por ano costumamos ir visitar novas indústrias e novas tecnologias. This site may look large, but a new facility that is planned nearby will be five times this size. It has yet to begin construction, but outside the town of Mora, land has already been allocated to build the largest solar farm in the world. Like many small towns, its young people have drifted away to the city in search of work. But the people of Mora are hoping that solar power will revitalize their sleepy town. Sobretudo que vai criar emprego, nós estamos numa zona muito carenciada desse ponto de vista, temos só no Conselho 900 pessoas inscritas no centro de emprego à procura de emprego. Este projeto para já, com a construção da central, criará mais de 100 postos de trabalho na fase da construção. A fábrica que vai ser instalada na sua primeira fase criará 115 postos de trabalho. Nós estamos a trabalhar com a criação do laboratório e com captar outros investidores, tendo como objetivo a criação à volta de 1.000, 1.200 postos de trabalho. And the town gets more than just jobs. 2.5% of the revenue from renewable fuels goes straight to the local council. Today we have a good relationship between the populations and renewable energies. People accept it and they want it. In the sense of the municipalities fight for having more renewable projects, which is quite an interesting uh, perspective. Could Australia do this? Australia can certainly use the sun uh, in spectacular ways uh, to produce uh, electricity, to produce fuels, um, to produce heat. So it's a matter of um, uh, setting up the minds of the, the people and the politicians to do it. We already have an installation for our preview test with the, the submarine cable. Portugal receives more sun than anywhere else in Europe but it's not relying on solar alone. Producing energy uh, is something that uh, is like our food. You cannot select one type of food to do it with it only from that type of food. Not only eggs, not only milk, not only meat, not only fish, not only potatoes. To have it a good thing, you have to have a mix, a balance. And the sources of electricity, there should be a balance. Because hydro has good things and bad things, solar has good things and bad things, coal has good things and bad things. So we have to have a mix. Portugal is crisscrossed by rivers, so it's no surprise that hydroelectric power will be the foundation for Portugal's green revolution. This is the largest dam in the country, and there are plans to build many more in the future. As you drive up Portugal's northern coast, you can't miss a more recent source of energy, wind turbines dotted all over the countryside. Powered by strong winds blowing straight off the Atlantic Ocean. 80 metres high, with blades 45 metres long, they feed power into the national electricity grid. We will have several thousand jobs created, uh, new factories for, for windmills, and, and uh, it, from, from, the outs, from, from, from the end of it, and a 70 million euro fund for innovation in, in, in renewable energies. So I think you start by pushing renewable energies and, and energy efficiency, and in the end you create new economic activities and new economic clusters that can create jobs and that can create innovation. And I think people are starting to, to, to understand the advantages of it. On this wind farm alone, 
there are 37 windmills or turbines producing over 100 megawatts of electricity. At full capacity, they could power a town of up to 50,000 households. Today is very good. A lot of wind out there? Yes, yes, yes. We can see that some turbines are near 20 meters per second. But the wind farms do have their critics. Some people are uh, happy, some people are uh, not happy because uh, they say that uh, the wind farms, uh, the, uh, the turbines uh, make some noise and uh, the impact uh, visual. But perhaps the most innovative and exciting solution to Portugal's energy needs lies just offshore. This is the test unit for what will soon become a wave farm. Portugal will soon be the first country to produce energy commercially from the power of the waves. It is the movement of these giant tubes built by a Scottish engineering firm that supplies the energy. This is how we do the connection. The constant expansion and contraction, both up and down and sideways, pushes oil through a hydraulic system, driving motors that supply power back to the shore. Uh, we have four, uh, and basically it moves in this operation. It's time to have a look inside. This is the intelligent part of the machine. Um, up here you've got uh, a hydraulic ram, and this is the main component which takes the energy out of the ocean swell. Then there's hydraulic pipes which take this into a hydraulic motor at the bottom here, which in turn attaches to this electrical generator. Then all the electrical generators are linked together throughout the machine and an electrical cable runs back to shore. When it's in rough seas, uh, this will be moving up, up, up and down and side to side quite vigorously. Um, but that's, that's the energy we're taking out of the ocean. This unit is just about ready to be towed up to the testing grounds off northern Portugal, where the Atlantic swells roll in. <laughs> Lisbon, the capital of Portugal. As in most other major cities these days, people are being asked to reduce their energy consumption and their waste. But here they've found a way of using garbage to help fuel their city. At the tip, they're turning trash into gas. They divided the tip into cells. As each cell fills, it is covered and an access well fitted. As the solid waste decomposes, it gives off methane gas. These gases are coming from the cells. From those where, cells we just saw. the solid wastes. Yes. And then we can transform this biogas into electricity. You can see here. This is the, the electropneumatic valve that yeah. controls the, the, each well. And you can see this valve is open and 100%. Yes. That, that, mean? that means it, it, these wells are producing uh, a lot and a good biogas. I think it's marvelous. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, wonderful that we have uh, waste. Uh, in, in, in first of all, we can use for anything but uh, we can use it to produce energy, to produce electricity. Uh, so uh, wastes are useful if you can use in the right, uh, in, 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 in the right form. The gas supplies the fuel for generators, which feeds the grid. Uh, has, it, has it looked at nuclear energy in the mix? 
uh, it has been now is is going on some discussion, but Portugal we have uh, uh, a problem with nuclear energy. Ec nuclear energy only came in x x x l size. Doesn't came in small or medium size. They go to three x l's. And uh, for the Portuguese dimension, uh, one nuclear power plant has been discussed uh, a 1600 megawatt power plant. And this is too much. As much as concerns about climate change, Portugal's move to green energy has been driven by economic factors. With its economy still lagging behind those of its European neighbours, Portugal is hoping to gain a competitive advantage. What impact will the increased use of renewable energy have on the Portuguese economy? Ah, this is a very good question because I think this, is, this will have a very, very positive uh, impact. Uh, we will certainly be able to create um, new jobs. Um, we will create, so we will uh, empower many companies in Portugal to have their own technology. Um, and then we can even export. In the future, we can export all these technologies and these capacities to other, uh, to other countries. So the impact of this on the economy is, in that sense, uh, quite large. Uh, yes, this is my, my kitchen, my salad cooking, salad cookers. It's my last day in Portugal, and I've been invited to lunch with Professor Revo, the solar chef extraordinaire. Very powerful, this... Um solar cooker. This is antenna. Antenna. But before we eat, he can't help showing me his latest and best solar oven up on the roof. Very powerful there. A lot of uh, heat. What would you cook in this? Uh, everything. 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 Why is Portugal racing ahead of Australia in renewable energy? It starts first. And uh, Portugal is the turtle, Australia is the hare. And when the hare starts to run, it will catch the turtle. I think the hare is asleep and uh, will awake and will pass. And uh, I'm not saying it's a bad thing being asleep because you can profit from the experience and the mistakes of the others. What do we have? Potatoes and uh, dried fish. Right. Mm -hmm. Bacalhau. In Portuguese we say bacalhau. Bacalhau. And this was cooked by, by the sun? By the sun. By, in a solar cooker. In a solar cooker. No gas, no electricity, no wood. <laughs> <laughs> the professor's enthusiasm is so infectious I can't help wondering why we in Australia don't make better use of...